Hi, this is Abe Friedhanser from CinemaDailyUS.com, and I'm thrilled to be here today with the director of the new film, Awake, Mark Rosso. How are you today, Mark? Great. Thanks for uh, having me on. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Can you tell me, what was the genesis of this film? Um, it was uh, this kernel of I an idea that I had uh, for a while about, you know, what would you do as a parent if you knew um, maybe like you were not going to survive, but your kids would. And, you know, in this end of the world idea, you know, how, how would you act? How would you prepare them? Um, so I always had this kind of idea. And then um, I was just having a, you know, talking to an executive who I, I, a lot. And he, they had this idea of like, you know, they want to do a movie about a solar, what if a solar flare happened and no one could fall asleep? And I kind of said, oh, I think I have the story that works in that scenario. Um, so, you know, pitched it to them, got it, went off with my brother and wrote the script for it. And uh, that became Awake. That's great. And so do you have uh, favorite disaster or post-apocalyptic films uh, that you sort of look to uh, that you wanted to be a template or inspiration for what the look and feel here? Um, you know, look, not so much look and feel, but there's definitely, um, you know, a movie that just stuck with me since I had seen it in cinema uh, 15 years ago, I guess, was Children of Men. You know, it was always a movie that I, 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 I um, just liked for what it did and how it worked and the way it told the story. So that was a, kind of an inspiration. Um, uh, there's, I'm a sucker for these types of post-apocalyptic movies. I love them. You know, I, I, I watch a lot of them. Um, it was a lot more enjoyable pre-pandemic, I think. Now it's like, <laughs> now, I, now I want to do comedies or something. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, um, so that, that was a movie. But look and feel, I wanted this to feel different than the typical post-apocalyptic movie. I wanted it to feel uh, vibrant. I wanted the earth and the world that they're fighting to exist in to feel hopeful. So that was a little bit of a departure. That makes sense. Were there any genre tropes you wanted to make sure to really avoid that you had seen in other films? Yeah, um, you know, there's there's like the the basically good and evil. Uh, you know, good good guys, bad guys. Um, it was very important to me that that everyone who's trying to survive this event and people would, you know, react to it very differently. And people are doing crazy things thinking that they can uh, get through it and survive it, but all of them are doing it in a world to them that makes sense. So I didn't want people to feel like, like I didn't want any bad people just for the sake of being bad. I just wanted everyone just trying to survive. And, and that's just bringing up a bunch of different shades in people. Yeah, and there's also a lot that happens, uh, you know, having to do with a church and a faith in the film. And I'm wondering if you see that as an endorsement of religion and spirituality or a critique of it, or it just happened to be the setting for a lot of these events. Yeah, it's funny. I think I think uh, there's a lot of, there ended up being a lot of religious uh, imagery throughout the film. Um, you know, not someone who's particularly religious, but I did grow up in, in uh, uh, going to Catholic school when I was a kid. And, and uh, someone said, pointed it out to me. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah. So it seeped in here for sure. Um, not, not an indictment. I think like there's uh, an indictment maybe on, on ze like zealotism, you know, just good or bad, this kind of groupthink idea, but not, I'm not taking shots at the church. I'm not taking, you know, it's just in this journey, this is a place um, where I think, you know, they go and yeah, maybe there's a little comment on, you know, we need to be more open-minded or something like that, but it's not a direct, you know, jab here or there. Right. And how important was it for the science of all of this to make sense? Did you uh, do a lot of research? Did you have consultants to make sure that this sort of tracked uh, if it would really happen in real life? Yeah. So we, we did, we did uh, in terms of the solar flare, you know, we based it off the, this thing called the Carrington, Carrington event where a solar flare happened and it kind of fried all the wires uh, It happened in the 1800s and, and kind of electricity went down for a while. So that was kind of, you know, loosely based in that. And then the sleep thing, we did look at, um, you know, this idea of frequencies and it's, it's theoretically possible that, you know, and, and then, 
in terms of what happens when we don't sleep, that's the thing that we, we looked at the most and we're trying to be as scientifically accurate as, as, as we possibly could. So in terms of the stages of degradation and, and how it all plays out, that was like the most accurate. That's great. And I think you could have a movie just about the lack of technology that in this modern age that we can't use our phones and our cars and all of that. I don't know if that was ever an appeal to you as, or if you always wanted to go as, as far as the, the sleep effect. Um, yeah, it, it is super interesting, right? I, I think this was a, it, it wasn't in the first, let's say the first draft of the screenplay that wasn't in, in it, but then quickly we kind of realized that we want to tell the story in this way. It's very important that they're disconnected to the rest of the world and they don't know what's happening here or there or how other people are dealing with this. And we just make this assumption that it's happening everywhere. And the story we're watching is, you know, one of thousands of stories all over the world of, of this event taking place. Right. And I think that ultimately the most important thing here is family, but it's interesting to me because you have these great young actors, but this isn't really a, a movie that families with young children should watch <laughs> together. So how did you sort of, uh, you know, grapple with that and, and can you talk about the, the young actors uh, you used here? Yeah, I uh, honestly, I have a lot of love for uh, the kids. I called them the kids when we shot, uh, Lucius and Ariana. Uh, they're great, like so professional, so great to work with. It, it can be disastrous uh, working with kids in general, like, you know, and, um, but they're just, I think Ariana is fantastic and Lucius as well. And they, they're believable and they great, give great performances. So that's amazing. And that, you know, it's funny though, cause you have to, I was definitely a diff different person on this set than I was in my previous films because there's kids on set and you have to, you know, word things differently and say things differently and be conscious of that. But they're so, they're so cool and down to earth and, and great to work with no pretension. So it was, it was awesome. That's great. And speaking of family, you worked with your brother on the screenplay here. And I'm curious, is that uh, collaborating with family on a professional, in a professional capacity, is that something you recommend? What are the advantages and the sort of limitations? <laughs> well, it took, it took many years. So my brother's also in the industry um, and we've always helped each other on each other's work. You know, I would send him a script and I, I know he's the guy I can send a script and he's going to give me the honest, the, the honest goods. No sugarcoating. He'll tell me like it is and same with him. So when it came time to writing this, I think that those years of like helping each other, working with each other, although not officially, really um, made this process easier. So it was great. We could just say, no, we don't like it. Why not? Here's why. Okay. Rebuttal. No. Okay. We won't have it in. If we both like something, we knew that's in. That's a good, good place to go. Um, so in that sense, it really moved the process along quicker. And uh, I would I recommend it? You know, it's it's tricky. <laughs> I won't go there, but for us, it works. I don't. I know it's not for everyone. And Gina Rodriguez is a really great lead. She's someone I first got to know watching Jane the Virgin, which is a totally different kind of role. Had you seen her in that, or just in Annihilation and Miss Bala and the sort of more similar kind of parts uh, for here? So I had seen I had seen her in Jane the Virgin, but then when I saw and I'm I'm terrible with names. When I saw Annihilation. I didn't know it was the same person. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't connect it right. And then after I, wow, who is this person? Because I really thought she was so great in that. And I look, I'm like, uh, oh my god, that's 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 one from Jane the Virgin. So, um, so yes. Yeah, so I had seen her, but I, you know, she was great, and I knew I just had a feeling that she would be perfect for this. Um, and luckily, she loved the script, and uh, and it worked out. Yeah, and you have a strong supporting cast also, including Jennifer Jason Lee and Barry Pepper. Is there anyone else that you were very excited that you had in this movie that you knew you wanted to have from the start? Yeah, I mean, Jen, uh, Jennifer Jason Lee was great, like someone I've, I've and Barry, but actually both of those I've, I've been huge fans of for, for many, many years. So just have the opportunity to work with them was like a thrill in, in and of itself. Um, also, Frances Fisher was someone that I'd always liked, so having to get in to work with her and then it was also exciting, like, you know, Finn Jones and Shamir Anderson are, I feel they're, you know, at different stages of their career, more on the upswing. And, and of course, the kids, Lucius and, and um, Ariana. So it was a great, it was a great mix of like these kind of veteran actors who are very solid and these up and coming actors. And, you know, I think the ensemble cast we had was quite phenomenal, to be honest. Very excited about it. Yeah, that's great. And you mentioned before that this is all was a lot more fun before a pandemic. 
Uh, how do you feel about the fact that this is, even though it's obviously a different kind of thing, how do you feel about the fact that it's coming out as we're sort of still in a pandemic? Yeah, I don't, I, I, it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, look, obviously timing is going to affect people's, you know, um, opinions of stuff and feeling in the mood they wake up in. So, you know, I just have to hope that people appreciate it and people like it and, and it takes people on the journey. I have no idea. I think it's better now than maybe six months ago or a year ago when we were more in the, you know, the depths of it. Uh, I think there's a, you know, we can, we can kind of see the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow right now. And, and I think that's better. So I just want, you know, there, this is a movie that, uh, I, you know, when you make a movie, you put your life and soul into it and um, you just want people to enjoy it and be able to go on the ride and, and, and have a good time and maybe they get something out of it as well. Yeah. And how do you feel about the fact that people will be watching it at home on Netflix rather than, you know, in a big movie theater? Um, you know, it's, it's part and parcel. I know, you know, it's not something you dream of when you're, when you're a kid and you want to be a filmmaker because, you know, Netflix doesn't exist. But I like the fact that so many people are going to get to watch it. Um, I, I do the one, the only thing I miss in this whole pandemic thing is that I won't get that one screening in the movie theater where we get together with the cast and everyone gets to see each other again after a few years. And, you know, um, so, you know, that, that's, that's the only negative, but the fact that it's on Netflix and I mean, the, the accessibility for hundreds of millions of people is phenomenal. So. Absolutely. And what's next for you? Do you have any projects coming up? Um, I'm, I've written a couple things over the, uh, the, break, I call it break, the last year. Um, one is a, I wrote with my brother again, it's an adaptation of a George R. R. Martin novel, which I'm very excited about. Um, so we'll see where that goes. And a uh, screenplay for a film that I wrote that, or a, sorry, a, a, a pilot for a, a TV show that, that I wrote. Looking into some documentary stuff too. I'm also producing some stuff. So also have two young kids and I'm enjoying my time home with them. So not rushing out to do anything. We'll see where the chips fall. Sounds great. Well, I wish you plenty of luck in the future, and I hope everyone will watch Awake when it premieres on Netflix on June 9th. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care.